Okay, so NVIDIA just had its GTC event. Uh, shout outs to Jensen Wong for his keynote. And uh, I'm not feeling that great right now. Um, definitely under the weather here, but I'm going to do the very best that I can to give you guys a breakdown of what is it that my thoughts are from this event and what is it I foresee coming down the pipeline. So without further ado, let's go ahead and give you my review of the NVIDIA event in under 10 minutes. All right, guys, let's go. All right, so uh, NVIDIA had its keynote uh, to kick off its GTC event for 2024. Uh, Jensen Wong always gives a keynote. Uh, it's nice to see him back on stage. Nice to see him back with the black jacket as always on brand. Um, and he was talking about a few things. He talked about uh, NIMS, which is their microservices, uh, which we'll get into. Then he also set the stage for their Blackwell uh, series, which is the next generation of its AI computing chips, which will also trickle its way into the standard GPU market, but we'll get into that too. And then the other thing that they did was, of course, what's a keynote without robots, especially in this day and age, since everybody is mentioning you know, AI integration into our services, AI, 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 this year. Um, so pretty much, he dropped the gauntlet and said, let's go a little bit further. I'm going to take a page out of Elon Musk's uh, page. Robots. Let's go. All right. So let's start it off with like setting the stage of really looking at GTC. So we're now into the time of the year where we're getting all these developer conferences and everything else that are more so catered towards developers. But investors and everybody else in the world is starting to take notice and realize that when you're developing or when you're uh, catering towards developers, they're be starting to become the lifeblood of your entire product or your entire like project. Um, so when we think about like Omniverse and everything else, that was really geared towards developers to test NVIDIA's AI models over the years. But one of the things that they weren't learned, they didn't really know was that NVIDIA was using Omniverse as a way to also help train its AI models by use cases by people like me and other developers, if you're watching, like you, um, to also train up its AI division in robotics, which we'll get into, AKA shout outs to Jetson and a few other things that are coming down the pipeline. And so, NVIDIA's kind of like learned the model, and I think that they've gotten it right now. So they focus on three major areas. One of those is the developers, like I've just said. The developers are the lifeblood because you get to see exactly what is it that they're doing, how is it that they're training things, and it also gives you an idea as it pertains to trends. Now, they learned this from like players like Microsoft, where Microsoft uses its cloud services to literally learn from its enterprise customers and to understand these are the trends and this these are the services that their customers are going to need moving forward in the future. So they learned that and said, okay, hey, well, let's bring it into our landscape by allowing them to test the services within Omniverse to get an idea and get an early jump of, on what is it that the consumer or what is it that the customer needs. The next area that it started to cater to is, of course, its partners. Now, this is nothing new for companies like NVIDIA because they thrive on partnerships with the likes of like your Dells, your HPs, your Microsofts, and many others. I mean, anybody that's within the computing space, and then on top of that, players like Cisco and Supermicro Computer. So, of course, it's like partners definitely takes shape. So we got developers, and we got uh, we we got developers, and we got partners. The next thing that we have is the services as it pertains to enterprise customers. So your enterprise customers, like for example, your Mercedes-Benz, your BYDs, your Microsofts, start to see some, some recycling of names here, where they focus on things like data center cloud uh, storage, as well as also AI through the cloud, um, bringing those services available, and then of course generative AI through the LLMs in which that they're able to do. So they kind of crack the code here in understanding that we can solve it on both for developers when they want to use tools independently, and then essentially we can start ch uh, charging them fees or even make it free for now, but ultimately charge them later. 
And then on top of that, for our partners, we charge them what our contract prices are. And then for what our enterprise customers are, we charge them what our enterprise contracting values are. So if they need more chips and everything else, AKA Blackwell or upgrades to cloud services, it kind of like creates this nice little moat that NVIDIA is building around it. Now, what are some of those things that make the moat, right? So Blackwell. So Blackwell is literally the upgrade to the H100 series uh, AI chips. Now, of course, everybody's going to be like literally fighting over these chips like, you know, like it's the, the newest Cronut or the newest Yeezys that once upon a time were like oh so rare. Um, especially due to a supply and demand issue as it pertains to more demand than there is supply. So we're dealing with some economic bottlenecks there, um, meaning that NVIDIA cannot produce as many chips as much as everybody is demanding. So of course that, that brings things to a high. And then of course their margins of what it costs for them to create these things uh, versus what they're selling it for. That's a whole nother conversation. Let's stick to the GCC event though. So, which brings into the part where we think about the services for developers, the microservices. So in the developer community, you can make these microservices available for developers or startups to literally use these microservices to literally deploy AI into their software or their, their platforms a lot easier. So it makes them deployable a lot faster. And of course they can scale also a lot easier. Uh, especially when using artificial intelligence, machine learning, you name it, and especially training models as well. So, you know, it's going to be kind of interesting to see what we do here at FTC. <coughs> Cough break. Don't worry, I'll probably just edit that out. Um, so what we probably see is, you know, we're probably going to notice a few things here moving forward. We're probably going to notice that the fact that that's going to become a model that ultimately it goes in a tier format as it pertains to pricing. So maybe one to two <coughs> tiers as it pertains to like a freemium model and then maybe like an as needed model when you start to scale up for the developer community. And we already see this in services on the enterprise side as well. So then uh, they brought out the robots part, which is probably like the showstopper of the entire event. So the showstopper, which is AI robots, is the fact that it's pretty much like Jensen dropped the, the bomb and letting everybody know that it's like, hey, it's going to be each and every single one of us that is going to be training these AI robots. So teaching them how to walk, how to move, posture, and everything else, maybe even other things in the future, that's all going to be done by us. And we've kind of like seen these models before, like with, you know... NVIDIA Drive, where once upon a time, NVIDIA Drive created NVIDIA Vision and many different other things where it's able to take in what it's learning from the car ride and be able to recreate an entire 3D model of the world that the AI sees. Well, it's only going to just get even better with like, for example, robotics, where it does the same thing, except that it's modeling human behavior and then using that to train the AI model. And then that AI model literally is embedded into the robot. Yeah, we're getting there, which is weird for me because of the fact that I thought that we were at least a solid five to 10 years out, only to find out now we're only like probably like three to five years away, um, more so with that sweet spot of four years from now. I mean, just imagine, think about all the things that have changed in the past four years. Okay, so here's my thoughts as it pertains to this event. Is I give it an A. I'll, of course, I'll give it an A. I'm not going to give it an A plus or A minus. I'll just give it a solid A. And here's the reason why. Because this is more so just an iterative, an iterative upgrade for NVIDIA as it pertains to what is it that they've unveiled, what is it that they're releasing, what is it that they're talking about. A lot of the things in which that we're seeing, we kind of saw these things on the horizon, on the forefront a year ago, two years ago. Uh, a lot of these discussions are now being had on you know wider scales because some of the other folks have now stepped into the game. It's going to be interesting to see like who are the other major players when it comes to robotics, especially now that since we've seen you know Boston Dynamics get acquired and so many other robotic companies. We, we once upon a time heard about them, but then they went quiet. And then, of course, there's Tesla's AI robot. So we're now at that point in time where it's like, okay, uh, if NVIDIA literally steps in and like literally takes and corners this market and is not only just first, but is shows that it actually works and it's proven on the manufacturing, agriculture, as well as like other enterprise base uh, work, 
this could get very, very interesting. Now, Jensen spoke towards that trillion dollar opportunity, which he kind of like, I think that he kind of left in there for investors to kind of like give justification like, hey, we know that we're trading at this value right now, but kind of like, you know, understand that these are market opportunities that we're growing into. And for all intents and purposes, we, I, I wish Jensen and NVIDIA all the best. I think that honestly, they stand a very good chance as it pertains to like literally cornering specific types of the market. And if, and if they don't corner the market, but they'll have a very high, heavy footprint inside that market. So I would just say like, this is one of those ones over the next two years. This is definitely the, this is definitely going to be one of the companies to watch for sure. Now, is this going to move the stock moving forward as it pertains to like what we just heard? I think that investors and analysts will take this information and analyze it, of course, and look at, you know, financial models and kind of get an idea of when some of these things are planning to release. And then they'll start putting out their price targets. But I think that their price targets have already been set for the year. Uh, a lot of them have had to reshape their price targets. So we're probably seeing like thousand dollar price targets and everything else with the potential pending uh, stock split, which some people are talking about, which is very possible it can happen. Um, but I think that as it stands right now with NVIDIA, I think that there is nothing that we heard today that literally says, okay, hey, I should be even more of a buyer into NVIDIA if I've already bought a significant portion. This is one of those ones where it's just like, okay, there was no one more thing. It was everything in which that ultimately justifies the stock as it pertains to its price point. Um, is the price point a little bit too valuation rich right now? Possibly. But yet at the same token, is it like too overvalued to the point where we don't believe that there's opportunity there? No. The one and only knock that I will consistently say that I have against NVIDIA is, you know, bring in $100, million, $100 billion in revenue, then I'll believe it. <laughs> Even if it's just for one quarter. All right, so all in all, the event was good. Um, the announcements that were made, so microservices, Blackwell, data center, as well as also focused on uh, AI robotics, that's a pretty dope lineup from what we've heard from NVIDIA moving forward, and we know that they will deliver. So what do you think? What were some of the things that excited you? What are some of the things that you want to learn about this that's coming forth out of the pipeline? I want to hear about those comments down below. Until next time, I'm Mark Monroe. Peace, y'all.